Come to Contact in the Desert in early June 2018 with George Norrie, Michael Tellinger, David Wilcock, Robert Boval, and myself. This is an exploration of the megalithic aspects of Machu Picchu. As always, brought to you by HiddenIncaTours.com. This, in fact, is my 66th visit to Machu Picchu, and each time I learn aspects which I did not see before. In general, they're subtleties, because, of course, after 65 times, you pretty well know the site. And what is apparently obvious is the difference between Inca-style construction, which you see here, and the older, finer, megalithic work, which you'll see as this video continues. So the official opening to Machu Picchu is very narrow, and that would ensure that an invading force or army could not enter en masse. It would be easy for the Inca to pick them off at the doorway. So, as we walk up the steps, again, looking at Inca-style construction, made of white granite, which is what the mountain itself is made of, we proceed, or proceed, towards the main complex itself. There on the right side is the mountain of Huayna Picchu. And these are the massive terraces that would have made Machu Picchu, with a population of 800 to 1,000 people, completely self-sufficient from the outside world. So as we proceed again, or proceed with Huayna Picchu in the background, we are looking at a ceremonial water system that goes on for several hundred meters, in general carved into the bedrock itself. And now we're going to start to see the more ancient work, which is here. You see the wall has been pulled apart by an earthquake going east to west or west to east. And then with the terraces in the background, now you see the very fine construction in the center of the screen. And as we go up and look at the Sun Temple, again, almost perfect construction techniques. Again the massive terracing system. And then here, again, the incredible quality of craftsmanship of what's called the Sun Temple. And you can see that the stone fits together very well and actually interlocks with the bedrock itself. And look at the poor craftsmanship above, superior craftsmanship below. The work above is Inca repair work. And then here, what you're seeing again is an east-west wall that has earthquake damage. The stones have been pulled apart and the adobe mud filling in was added by the Inca. And here, Inca construction and superior megalithic construction. And here it's even more obvious. You see the Inca work on the right transitioning into the finer megalithic higher quality work and as we go along this wall, it gets better and better. So are we talking three different civilizations, with the finest craftsmen being the first? And look how tightly fitting these stones are. Again, an east-west ancient wall with um, damage from an ancient earthquake. And as we enter down into here, this interesting hole, which was not for a torch or something, 
it's actually for most likely winter solstice at about noon. And again, fine work on the bottom, and then incredibly crude work above. This is not recent reconstruction, this upper work is Inca. And again, Inca work transitioning into finer, older work. This is the so-called quarry at Machu Picchu. You can see that the stone has natural cracks in it, so that would have made it easy for the Inca to be able to remove slabs and break them up. And here again, using wooden or even um, stone chisels and wedges. And then we have another Inca work here with some adobe filling and far superior, older, east-to-west damaged, megalithic work. Look at the superior work in the background, the inferior work in the foreground. Again, not recent reconstruction. And then the very strange Temple of Three Windows, and you see there, superior work on the bottom, and inferior work on top. It's lucky for us that very little reconstruction in modern times has occurred at Machu Picchu, so we can see exactly the way it looked, more or less, when the Inca abandoned it around 1532 AD. And you can see how these two stones would have fit perfectly together, but there are no straight lines. Inside there are curves, but they match each other. And once again, another obvious example of earthquake damage from east to west. These once tight-fitting blocks are now very much separate. And as we look at north-south, here in the center, there is no damage. You can see actually there on the right side of that three-sided structure, that wall has sunk down by two feet and contrast it to an Inca construction. Now this is some of the finest work to be found at Machu Picchu. The reasoning behind the different sizes of stones and these vertical smaller ones likely was earthquake proofing by the ancient master builders. And here again we see a stress crack that probably occurred as the result of a massive earthquake. Now what's intriguing about this structure is actually coming around the corner here. Watch this stone at the bottom and see how complex it is, how many angles and surfaces there are. And again, an overview of Inca work as compared to the older and much finer megalithic work. Megalithic below and Inca above. Okay, we're at Machu Picchu train station because there's a train coming right now. <laughs> And we'll have to wait a second here. But we're with Cliff, who is an engineer from Australia, and his lovely wife Stella. So, Cliff, you've now spent three days in the Cusco area. Prior to that, we were in Bolivia looking at Pumapunku and Timunaku. And obviously, you could see the difference in construction techniques. So, what are your impressions of Machu Picchu? How many time periods would you say were involved in its construction? Yeah, I think there's at least three to four significant time periods. And you can see that by the, the scale of the construction. So you're starting off with very large stones, high amount of energy, 
high amount of quartz content, mica, things like that. Then you get down to slightly smaller structures, but still have the amazing engineering accuracy and precision. Then you get right down to the basic constructions of the Inca type philosophy. So I think there's different stages of development where the technology is falling backwards rather than going forwards. And it, that seems very obvious in Machu Picchu for me. Okay, great. And um, what technology do you think was involved in doing the polygonal, organic, megalithic work? Yeah, I think there's a huge amount of energy, the locations where they are, also the structure of the type of stone, and it's very selective. There's many mountains, many ranges around here. They've chosen specific areas where they can maximise their engineering and their technology and their individual knowledge and apply that in the elemental uh, forces. So I think there's something connecting both uh, science and technology, but also in the actual elemental structure of nature itself, and combining those to a level of precision and engineering that we don't even have today. It's just amazing. So we're not talking bronze chisels? No, definitely. Uh, just the amount of precision around that stonework, and, and also the stones themselves are very consistent in their structure and their approach. There's not cracks in them. There's not all different uh, impurities in them. They're very pure, so there's some sort of effect upon the stone, which has to be a very high level of technology, nothing that we could comprehend even till this day. So these are related books at Amazon.com. Machu Picchu, Virtual Guide and Secrets Revealed. A Brief History of the Inca from Rise Through Rain to Ruin. Aftershock, the Ancient Cataclysm that Erased Human History. Lost Technology of Peru and Bolivia. And the Inca Before the Conquest. And these are upcoming tours in 2018. Our Mexico, Maya, Olmec, Toltec, and Aztec tour in January. Egypt, studying lost ancient high technology before the time of the pharaohs in March. Contact in the desert, June 1 to 3, 2018, at Indian Wells in California. The Inti Raimi Inca Celebration of the Sun in Cusco, the Sacred Valley of Peru, Puma Punku, and beyond. And the Elongated Skulls Tour of Peru in August. And finally for now, Croatia and Bosnia, a tour of the ancient coast and the so-called Bosnian pyramids.